Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently 5 to 11 on Wednesday the 6th of July 2022. I'm currently reading more Goon Show scripts by Spike Milligan. After that I'm probably going to read some poetry by Tori Wag, who is somebody that I met at a recent, uh, well it was a gig, it was Far Out Festival so my band played there but I also had a store selling books and CDs. So that was fun and um, yeah. Uh, for be my bedtime book, I'm reading Mephie Vu des by R.L. Stein, which is why I'm afraid of bees from the Goosebumps series. And that is where I'm at. So I'll try I'll try and update you soon, but I don't know if that's gonna happen because recently it's been like four days between each of my updates, and then I forget what I have to talk about. Dane reads. Yo, greetings. I actually did it. It is um, 10 to 10 on Thursday, the 7th of July. Um, just another day of hard work really, mostly nocturnal. Um, did a Q&A call earlier, that went okay. I had another call planned but that's got postponed until Monday. My screen has just turned on there, that's why I've gone blue. Let me fiddle with it. Um, yeah, I finished reading that Spike Milligan book that I was reading. I also finished reading last night, Mephie Vu des Abeilles, which is by R.L. Stein, and it is Why I'm Afraid of Bees from the Goosebumps series, or the uh, Serie Chard de Poule. Um, En français, donc uh, je lis ce livre pour uh, m'améliorer mon français, um, or j'ai lu, yeah, je veux dire c'est lu, j'ai lu, j'ai lu, what? Um, yeah, it was okay, it was actually quite hard to follow because I had some weird tenses going on in it that I just couldn't wrap my head around. I'm going to log in so that, there we go, so that my screen doesn't keep turning off. Um, so it was kind of difficult to read and I have read it in English but only once, so that probably didn't help matters. But yeah, it was okay, it was like 3.5 out of 5. Same as I gave it on English, to be honest. Um, then, I read Asking for Trouble by Tori Wag. So Tori is a poet who I met at the Far Out Festival recently. I'm just gonna read one of her poems, one that I tabbed out, Biggie's here as well. Um, just to give you a feel. Okay, regrets. We never did grab that coffee. I stupidly assumed there were infinite opportunities. It didn't matter if I put it off till next month when the diary would be a little freer. Living life as if death wasn't just there, around the corner, that morbid gift, our earthly reminder to find time for one another. So yeah, I thought it was very well written, very moving, um, and I'm hopefully gonna be speaking to her soon for my radio show. Oh no, Biggie. Yes? Yes, did you like this book? He says he thought it was okay. So I gave it like 3.5 out of five. Yeah, it was, it was good. Um, and now I'm currently reading Grandpa in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, which is the latest instalment of the Wizard of Oz series. Kind of supposed to be reading this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman, but we've both just totally gone off schedule. So, you know, make of that as you will. Um, it's actually not particularly good. You might have noticed I haven't tabbed anything yet, and I'm like a quarter of the way through, so it might be the first time since we started doing these buddy reads that I just don't have anything to say in a review. There was one book which I didn't review because I lost the footage for it and I'd taken all my tabs out. But yeah, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, that's on, tra on track for like a 3.5 out of 5. It's just okay. And I don't know what I'm gonna read after that. We'll see. Yo, it's me. It is um, 10 to midnight on Tuesday the 12th of July 2022. I'll probably keep this vlog going until Thursday because then on Friday I'm going to the Vegan Campout Festival. I've actually just um, tested my, I'm just turning my fan off because it's very loud. I've actually just tested my tent in the kitchen as you do and yes I have all the bits for that so that's good. I don't know where my camping rucksack is though. I've been trying to figure that out. I must have got rid of it. It's the only thing that makes sense to me because I don't know where else I could possibly have put it. Um, which is a pain, but I'll just have to buy another one tomorrow. Um, but I got everything else pretty much ready. I do need to do one last little shopping list because I need to get things like sun cream and energy drinks. <laughs> That's one of my priorities. Maybe a few beers to take, I don't know. Um, what's happened? So Friday it was the open mic night at Wickham Art Centre which was fun. It was, wasn't was very like highly attended. I ended up hosting it and me and my friend Dave played a few tunes. Um, yeah, it was pretty good so that was nice. Um, Saturday just chilled and then Sunday, Sunday was the Sunday jam at the Bellevue, the Sunday acoustic jam so I went to that and then I met up with uh, Shay who is somebody I'm kind of seeing. <laughs> 
And um, yeah, I met up with her and some of the other lot that she works with because she works at the art centre where I used to work. So I met up with a few of those to go around town for a few drinks. Uh, ended up in Butler's, I think it was called. I don't know, I'd never been in there before. Um, it was a bit, a bit clubby, but it was okay. But yeah, Sunday night, Sunday night out. Um, and then Shay stayed over here and then Monday morning we both were quite hungover but I was good to do my um, Q&A call for my client and then, you know, had a few naps and then just caught up with stuff later on and then today's Tuesday. I interviewed somebody for my radio show earlier so that was good. Uh, book wise, I don't really have too much to say because I'm still reading uh, Peter James Dead at First Sight and it's still... It's alright, it's probably a 3.5 out of 5, it's not the best of his books, it's one of the Roy Grace crime novels. This chair's very squeaky, I need to get some like WD-40. Um, but yeah, I've almost finished reading that now, I've got an Asterix BD I'm reading, uh, Bon Destiné, uh, it's like a French graphic novel that I'm reading as my bedtime book. And then I'm probably going to read The Disappearance of Adele Badeau by Graham McCrae Burnett. I uh, read one of his books before, His Bloody Project. That was brilliant. So I'm probably going to read that and then I've got Absolute Proof by Peter James up there, which is hench. It's like this thick. So I think I'll probably take that one away with me because that should keep me going while I'm at the festival. So I, I only really need to take like one, maybe two books away with me. So yeah, that's where I'm at, um, and I'm just doing a little mini bit of filming now, just to sort of, you know, at the end of the day, I've, I've, it's been a productive day, it's been good. Um, and my housework and my sorting and stuff is all mostly done now as well. Second time probably speaking on stage in front of people. Obviously I've spoken on camera to millions, but it is nothing compared to being in front of a crowd of people and I get really nervous. And that was just the easiest decision. And like after going vegetarian and trying for a month and failing miserably, like going vegan was the easiest thing. It was just like same like going sober. It wasn't hard. We would just like naturally we wouldn't go when you go to a supermarket. And for us, like, alcohol and things like that don't exist. We almost forget that people still drink. And same now it was with veganism. Like, we wouldn't almost see those uh, fridges full of meat and everything. We just go past it. But as the time went on, like... Uh Give it up for us. Testing, testing. Can you guys hit me in the back? Yeah. How are you guys doing today? Breed yeah. billions of animals into existence to be slaughtered. You have to clear enormous amounts of land for grazing and to grow crops to feed the animals. In fact, according to the World Bank, animal agriculture is responsible for up to 91% of Amazon destruction. Now, can anyone guess how many acres of forest are cleared every year globally? 25 million, it's insane. And that's not the worst part. According to the FAO, 3.9 billion acres of ocean seafloor are also deforested every single year because of our insatiable demand for fish, because of bottom trawling. Oh, it's warm.
microphone. 2022, really good to see you all here. Um, I hear the Wi-Fi is playing up a bit, but just make the most of it. Switch off from work, party, have fun. Remember, we're lucky to be here. It's such a big change since the COVID days, but there's still being blown up constantly, walking across these minefields everywhere, and we just couldn't protect them. They didn't know where we'd mapped out an area that was safe or not safe to go into. So I was married to a musician at the time who I basically persuaded to do a concert in Russia, in Red Square, so that I could get to meet President Putin. I didn't actually care less about the concert, but I organized it. But the plan was to create a solution to meet somebody, to get him to change the system and sign the ratification. You don't look 42. It sounds like a compliment, but what they're saying is, you don't look 42 now, maybe, but when you do, that will be disgusting. <laughs> I'd like to just like embrace being an adult man at this point. But I was talking to a friend the other day about maybe growing a beard. And he said, if you grew a beard, you'd look like a child in a disguise. <laughs> Now we have BA5 wild type, like some Pokemon out there, like Pikachu, achoo, I got you, now you're infected, very not fun. Anyway, I'm just rambling about that, but you get the idea, pandemic stuff. So we're going to talk about them. So this is zoonotic diseases, I'm studying a master's in public health, pretty much done. And so I got to study some, some zoonotic diseases there as well, and of course, a zoonotic disease is like a zoo animal is spread by germs, you know, germs that are spread by animals to people. And we all love animals so much, if you're here, round of applause for animals, why not? <laughs> and I was able to put on muscle and I was breaking PRs in the gym. Um, and so, with all of that new information, I was making, like I said, a lot of progress. My body reflected the new progress that I was making. That somebody suggested, hey, you should do a bodybuilding show. The first thing I considered what I used to do many years ago. If anyone's familiar in the crowd, what I used to do, like do. Who remembers Dirty Sanchez? Yeah, no one used to come up here, smash bottles on my head, stick drums, sticks up my ass. Also, to inspire others, a lot of people think that these kind of challenges are not possible. Now, if they, hopefully, if they see somebody like me with the background that I had, that can actually do this kind of stuff, then hopefully I've inspired many others to think, well, they can actually do the same thing. And then I went vegan. And I went vegan in a really unusual way. I was cooking my chicken in my kitchen, and my dog, 
Coco Puff, who is no longer with her and who rest in peace, was looking up at me, hoping for a scrap of food. And it just hit me that I was cooking an animal and I was loving an animal. And my. I thought Wimbledon looked fair. Doesn't that sound like the most wonderful event you could ever speak at? So lovely. Right? Wimbledon books. How lovely. So I said yes, naturally. And then a few weeks before the event is due to take place, I find out, okay, I'm going to be on a panel talking about sustainability. Hello, boy oh boy, have I got an update for you. Nothing serious, I made that sound really serious. I just haven't filmed an update for fucking ages. It's currently Thursday the 21st of July. It's about quarter to ten at night. I went to vegan camp out last weekend. It was very good. I put some footage in here for you that I took on my camera. I'm probably not going to tell you what happened day by day, but I did keep a journal um, and I wrote some poetry while I was there. So I'll link below and you can read that if you're interested. But yes, it was very good. Um, while I was there, I was reading Absolute Proof by Peter James. Actually, no, I'll tell you what, we got these three, haven't we? So I, first off, I finished reading The Disappearance of Adele Badeau by Graham McRae Burnett. So he wrote a book called His Bloody Project, which I really enjoyed. Um, and yeah, this is like a literary fiction slash mystery novel. Very interesting, very gripping. Uh, a few twists and turns. It's more on the literary side than the mystery side, but it has elements of both. And just, yeah, I did enjoy it. I gave it a four out of five. Review coming soon. Uh, then, while I was away, I read Absolute Proof by Peter James. This is a book, it's been compared to The Da Vinci Code, but it's basically a thriller slash adventure novel, which deals with the idea of there being absolute proof of God's existence and what that would mean. Um, Honestly, the actual plot was more about absolute proof of Jesus' existence, and even then it could have just been any 2,000-year-old dude. But hey-ho, it was okay. Probably like a week, four out of five, it was well written and stuff, and the characterization was great. And it did make me think, which is what I asked for, really. Then I read Asterix Max number nine by a, a Goscinny and Adazzo. Um So this is... It's not like an official Asterix book, although it does have excerpts of it, and it's got lots of like puzzles in it and things. And it's also got some, um, like this here is uh, Un Adventure de Luc Junior, um, which is another graphic novel series. It's basically like a bind up, um, I don't know what you'd call it, almost like a, an annual, like how you have annuals, um, except I believe this is trimestrial, which is what? Once every three months, I think? Anyway. Um, I gave this probably a week four out of five. I did enjoy it. Um, really good for expanding my vocabulary and all of that stuff. Then I read Objects of Affection by Alan Bennett. So these are the scripts for some TV plays, basically. Uh, really well done. I mean, Bennett's great. He's a really cracking writer. Uh, what was interesting about these was they, because they were TV scripts, they were shorter than his stage plays. Um, and you don't have to have seen the TV shows or whatever to appreciate these. There was also some, like, commentary here and there, which is always fun to read as a fellow writer, you know. Uh, probably a week four out of five review of that coming soon. And now I am reading Artemis by Andy Weir, which I picked up in a charity shop because I've still been going and dropping some bits off. And it's alright so far. I, I think it's better than um, it gets given credit for. I think it get, has a lot of haters. Because ultimately, anyone who reads that, they're going to compare it to The Martian. And The Martian was like one of the defining sci-fi novels of a generation almost. So he's, never, he's always going to struggle with that, you know? So yes, anyway, that's where we are book-wise. Came back from the vegan camp out on Monday. I have just been being productive since then. Been doing some housework. I did my garden earlier. Big life news is that I am now officially in a relationship. So I am dating Shay, um, who you will probably meet at some point. Um, and if you know me in real life, you might know Shay as well. Um, so that's very exciting. We're both very happy, which is all good. I'm seeing her tomorrow. Uh, she's been away this week, so obviously I was away at Vegan Camp Out, and then she's been away um, with her aunt and having like a you know really nice little sort of self care week. Um, so we haven't seen each other for like a week, so we're really looking forward to seeing each other tomorrow. Well, I have a gig, so me and my band are going to be playing. Shay's coming along, uh, her friend David is coming along, and that should be good. Um, 
And then I don't know what the weekend plan is. I know Shay's working for a lot of it, but that's fine because, you know, then I'll just work and we both need money to go and do adventures and shit. Um, I don't know if there's any live music. I think, well, I know there is. I don't know if there's any like jams or open mics or anything like that. So if there isn't, I'll probably just do a lot of work in. Um, and I've got some cookingy bits that I want to do with bits from my garden. So that's where I'm at. I don't know how long this vlog is, so I guess we're just going to keep going and I'll try and wrap it up this weekend and actually properly have a cut off because I've been really bad at vlogging. I've just been so busy, man. And, and like then when I have been filming, I've been filming other shit. So, yes, that is where we're at. Hello, everybody. It is Monday the 25th of July at 25 past 11. Um, my computer has just done the good old blue screen of death, so I thought I'd do a quick vlog update while it restarts. I finished reading Artemis by Andy Weir. I gave it a week four out of five. I enjoyed it. I think a lot of the people, the naysayers or whatever, sorry, I'm fixing my necklace. My other half goes mad every time I don't. There we go. Um, I think a lot of the naysayers about it were expecting another version of The Martian, which was like, you know, crossover pop culture sci-fi success that comes along once in a generation and Artemis is just more kind of hard-boiled sci-fi really um, but I did enjoy it I did have some issues with a few bits of the science though which is unusual because An uh, Andy Weir is normally quite accurate with it but like there's this big bit with chloroform for example and people are like passing out instantly but I've heard that with chloroform that's not how it works like it takes a long time for chloroform to knock somebody out um, it's not how it shows in the movies where you put a wet rag over someone's nose and they just go out. Like it takes like five, ten minutes for them to pass out from it. Um, I'm just logging in here. So yeah, there were a few issues I had with it, but overall it was pretty good. And I'm now reading Pirate Latitudes by Michael Crichton, which is historical fiction about pirates, basically. And I, this was apparently found found amongst his like affairs after he died. Uh, it was found on like his computer. Um, and that makes it kind of interesting. Um, it's actually really well done. I have noticed a few uh, like head hops during it, which is like as an editor, you would kind of call him out and I'd be like, you need to fix those head hops, mate. Um, but yeah, it's really well written and very absorbing. I, I was expecting it to maybe be a bedtime book, but actually I'm really enjoying it. It's on course for a pretty strong four out of five. And then after that, I think I'm gonna read Plays 2 by Alan Bennett. Still reading Asterix Mas Max as my bedtime book. Life-wise, I played a gig on Friday, uh, so I played an acoustic set with just me and my mate Dave, and then uh, the full band set afterwards. Got paid for it, so that was nice. Uh, Shay came along, so it was good to see her, and she came back here and stayed over. It was very nice. Um, and then, yeah, our friend David was there, and he was very drunk, and then he, he'd been to a funeral, to be fair. Um, he's not had a good time lately, but he was very drunk, and then had like a combination anxiety attack and uh, asthma attack. So we called an ambulance, the ambulance never showed up, so we ended up walking him home. Um, and luckily he lives in like assisted living, so there was someone there to kind of look after him. But yes, yeah, so that was stressful. And then Shay was meant to start her new job on, um, on, on Saturday, but couldn't because obviously um, we'd been like messing around with ambulances and hospitals and all of this stuff. So yeah, we just had a chill day on Saturday. I made a cooked breakfast. Uh, we watched lots of peep show, played some board games. It was very fun. She headed home on Sunday, um, and I've just been being productive since then, really. I had a couple of calls earlier that went pretty well. And yeah, I'm just settling into product productivity. Um, I'm doing pretty well with most of my stuff at the moment. So yeah, just doing a quick spot of filming, uh, and then I need to do some editing in a bit, because I actually need to finish preparing tomorrow's radio show. So I need to do that. But that seems like a good place to love you and leave you. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.